What is D3JS? According to the definition, it says data driven document, which is not super clear. Of course, it gives you DDD, but it's not very clear what this library can be used for. So if I had to put data driven document or D3JS as a simple word definition, I would put something like this. If you have numbers and you want to create graphs and charts with those numbers, then definitely you can use D3JS, but with a twist. Let's just say you have a bunch of numbers, probably some investigating report about a housing data, financing, or any other documentation that you have collected. And you want to just create bar charts and pie charts with that, then D3JS is not a suitable thing for you. The reason for that, you are bringing up a machine gun in a knife fight. And surely machine gun has its own advantage, but in the knife fight, you probably want a little bit more speed and your machine gun is not gonna give you. Now, no, don't worry, I'm not gonna give you here close combat techniques here, but rather I'm here to talk about D3JS. Hey there everyone, my name is Hitesh and in this video we're gonna talk about D3JS, how you can use that. I'm also gonna give you a quick example of getting started with D3JS. But in case you are expecting that D3JS, we're gonna all close it up, this topic in just one video. D3JS is amazingly big library and it requires definitely a full-fledged course, but this video can be a great starting point in getting started, how to read the documentation and where to find what you're looking up for. My name is Hitesh and this is a channel loved by programmers. So in case you are also a programmer who is looking up for a community, this is a great place and you might want to hit that subscribe button. Now with that all clear, let's get started. Now that this is a clear point that if we want to have a whole lot of numbers and you want to convert them into graphs and charts, we definitely can use D3JS. But as I mentioned, D3JS is an amazing and little bit heavy library. It can definitely do a lot of heavy lifting, but for bar charts and graph charts, simple pie charts, I really don't recommend to use it because it's a very heavy duty. And these kinds of small stuff can be done by a variety of other libraries, amazing libraries that are already present in almost every language. And of course, one more thing, just like programmers are almost always very creative, D3JS, the main focus was data-driven document, means we were focused totally on graphs and charts, but with the amazing and very creative mind of programmers, we were able to create amazing thing with the D3JS. And by the term, we means all programmers, entire programming community. And you might be wondering what we were able to create. Some things like examples which are mentioned on the D3 website. So for example, if I go up here and look on any of the chart, they are pretty much very, very impressive. And if you just click on any one of them, uh, they give you a huge, huge uh, understanding and visual perspective of that. But definitely, if that doesn't impress you, there is another a Polar Clock project by Mike uh, Bostock and it gives you a real time. This is all created in the D3JS, definitely an amazing project. And the code behind this project is not just code, it's a piece of art. Now definitely by seeing this interesting example, you might want to get your hands a little bit dirty with the D3JS. So don't worry, I'm gonna give you that. So now let's go ahead, move on to my desktop and let's quickly create a simple file and try to just have a little bit taste of D3JS. So now let's go ahead and take a little bit practical guide and practical dive into the D3JS. So onto their website, D3.js is an amazing resource if you want to read anything and definitely they have a direct documentation which takes you on GitHub and provide you all the resources. For example, if you want to take a look on their API references and you want to change things like colors, brushes, a color scheme, they have a whole lot of things you can do uh, up here and they support a whole lot of insane things which I believe probably nobody is ever going to use in just one project, but definitely it's amazing and massive. And in case you want to take a look more further, you can go into examples. Uh, they have a pretty nice collection of examples that you can try out. Bubble charts, uh, uh, sunburst, a whole lot of them, which I guess probably, I don't know who would be using all of these in just one project. But definitely, whatever you need, it's almost there. It's almost there. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how we can create a very simplistic example and uh, we definitely can search onto that. Let's quickly go into the documentation and uh, let's quickly go for gallery or examples. Let's try gallery and we should be able to see some of the bar charts as well. And uh, I saw it somewhere definitely while working on this video. 
I guess there is a search button. No, not yet, but definitely there are a lot of things. Now, the default example, which is given in D3.js is pretty amazing for almost all of them. You can just edit the variables and uh, the graphs and the data, and you can just get the graph, whatever you like. So now let's go on to their homepage and uh, try to figure out how we can use that. So we can see that uh, to link it directly, the latest copy of this, we can directly copy and paste this into our HTML or wherever you like. And uh, definitely a, a copy button here could have been a little bit help, but I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Now what I've done is I've created an empty HTML file and I've opened it up in my browser in my code editor VS code. So now let's quickly go ahead and try to understand how this actually works with a simple example and explanation part up here. So let's go up here. And first and foremost, I'm gonna put an exclamatory sign, hit the tab so that I can auto complete this stuff. And I'm gonna put a couple of tabs and I'm gonna say uh, D3 uh, JS example. Now definitely uh, we need a couple of more things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a division and inside that I'm gonna create our we don't need division, we can directly create an H2, which is going to hold up some of the lorem text, probably 20 words of them is fine. Now, in case you are wondering what is this, this is Emmet, which is a default plugin in VS Code. In case you want to know more about this uh, shortcut and uh, expanding these things, I do have a free course at learncodeonline.in on Emmet. I think every programmer should take that course. Okay, moving further, so how we're gonna add that? Now definitely we can add that at the end of body, so whatever we have copied, so this is what we have done. Now first and foremost, we need to learn how we can quickly just select anything and change some of the properties on that. So for that, we are going to create our own script. There we go, not like that. We're gonna get script just like that, okay. So how we can select anything? First and foremost, the goal is to select the H2. And in case you are wondering how you can do that, it's actually like ridiculously simple up here. All you have to do is once you add this, you have an access to D3 and then you can use a select method here, uh, which can select anything. It has a lot of selection attributes that you can use. In this case, since we just want to have selection of H2, we can just go ahead and do that. Now further, you can change some of the styles. So we can just select, uh, style just like that and the style is a key value properties that you have to provide the first one can be like something font dash size and the second one can be something like i want to bump it up like 50 and i'm going to just save that so once i save that obviously this gets us nothing uh, so why is it not giving us anything uh, let's just save that and uh, probably it's not happy let me try to open that up open with live server again there we go so we got it this time and I'm gonna just shrink my code editor a little bit so that we can see both the things side by side. Okay, I think this much is enough and we can just see that. Okay, adjusting the things. Okay, uh, there we go. And if we just really remove the size of that and of course I forgot to use that into the double quotes. Save that and there we go. Now, one more thing which I'm forgetting, I'm super forgiving. I forgot to use a pixels. Uh, there we go. So it bumped it up. Now definitely we can change this up. So this is our first tutorial about how we can select anything. Let's go and give it like reasonable 20 pixels. So there we go. This is how we select the elements. One more thing that we need to learn before we can actually move into the graph part is how we can select uh, an on our unordered list. Unordered list is an important thing because we will be working on SVGs and SVGs are being replicated into it. So it's important that we understand how we can select unordered list and populate it with some of the data. So again, selecting that is super easy. I'm gonna press Command Shift D to duplicate that. And I'm gonna move this style onto the next line. Okay, we definitely don't need style. So what do you want to select? We want to select unordered list. Now the strange part about this is whenever you select an order list, uh, you have to provide more selection things. <laughs> I know it's a little bit weird, but this is how it works. So we're gonna say uh, select all, and that further you have to say that I'm selecting on all the list item inside the unordered list. Okay, that makes sense. Now what do you want to populate with it? So obviously we need some kind of data. So I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna get them some data. So I'm gonna say heroes. And since it's a season of heroes, we're gonna start with the big guy Hulk and then the amazing Doctor Strange. Strange. And uh, I'll have just two more. And I'm gonna have Captain America. Okay. Captain America. And I'm gonna bring up one from India as well. In case you don't know, that's an Indian superhero. 
So there we go. So once we have got this like select, we have selected uh, the unordered list and we have selected all the list item, then we want to populate it with the data. And what data we are looking up for, it is heroes. There we go. Now this is all not gonna done. We have to actually loop through with each and every list item. In order to loop through, we have to run a method which is enter. Now just alone this is not gonna do that. Uh, enter means keep on looping through all the list item. Now we have to populate the list item. So we're gonna say we want to append a list item. There we go. Now what do you want to put into this list item? For that you can just mention a text. Now just mentioning the text is not gonna be doing all the things. We have to tell it like uh, go through with each hero's element which is an array and then just uh, put it on the screen. So for that we have a very good option here. We can just use a hero and an arrow function. Now hero is a variable which is taking care of each of these elements automatically. No, we don't have to use for each or anything in D3JS. It just works like right out of the box. And I can just say hero here. And there we go, finally. I know a lot of options, but this is how it works. So there we go, we were able to populate all the things up here. Now in case you're wondering, can I edit all these things? Is it definitely a loop? Yes, definitely, it's a loop inside. You can populate it by plus an exclamatory sign just like that, and there we go, we have got that. So this is all clear up that we have got this. Now it's time to mess around with a little bit and the most basic graph. So what we are going to do further is we are going to populate a graph. There we go. So the graph is always into the SVG, SVG, there we go. So this is our basic empty SVG. This is usually how you get started into uh, any kind of D3GS project and definitely how you want to populate and all these stuff. So I'm gonna need a couple of width and height in here as well because I don't want to just expand it whole screen. I want to provide a fixed width and height. So I'm gonna give it a width of, uh, let's just say width is going to be, uh, let's start with a square one, 300 pixels. So 300 pixel and height is also going to be, um, let's go 300 pixels as well, whatever you like. Okay, save that. Definitely it's not gonna do anything right now. We have to populate it through a D3GS. For that, we need data. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna say uh, var, I should have used var above as well. Uh, we, should, we can go for numbers and that number can be anything. Like for example, 20, uh, 30 and uh, 50, uh, again 30, maybe uh, 10, uh, something like that. So you got the point that we just need some numbers. I'm gonna add one more just for fun, 90. Okay, so this is our number that we have got. Now we have to also give one more variable here, which is going to be what's going to be the bar height itself. This is a compulsory parameter, so we're gonna declare it in advance. And this is usually the fixed parameter, like what should be the height of your bars. And uh, the maximum that we are gonna go is going to be the 40. Okay, now it's time to select all of this. We're gonna save some time and we are gonna go ahead and select this. Now the till the time we have got this enter, this is exactly the same code that we have to say, but again, in place of unordered list, we want to select SVG. Okay, that's all clear. And uh, definitely we don't want to like uh, keep on uh, selecting on. In case of SVG, we don't want to populate it further with the list elements, but rather we want to keep on populating it with rectangle. So for that, we have to just say rectangle, okay. Now further, the data that we will be using is not gonna be heroes, surely it can be, but this is a string and there is no comparison with the bar charts. So we're gonna say numbers, there we go. And enter actually keeps on looping through the values. Okay, so this is all good. This is all uh, good and nice. Now, technically what we should be doing here in this case, notice we were appending the list item a little bit later. So I want to do almost like exactly same up here. So let's go up here and we want to append, there we go. And what do you want to further append? I want to append it up, just like previously we have appended the list item, in this case we are going to keep on appending for rectangles. Okay, now some of the compulsory parameters, now right now if I just save this, this is not gonna give me anything, because it requires definitely more parameters to be passed on and they are all compulsory ones. So the first one is the attribute, and in fact all of the one which we will be typing now onwards is gonna be attribute. So, I'm gonna go for attribute, first and foremost, the width of each chart that you want to have. Now, in case we want to just populate directly back, like 20 should be having a width of 20, and you want to just set all to the default, you can go something like this, D and D. So this is like, uh, just keep on looking into the data, 
and just uh, give us back that data. So this is what we will be doing here. Further, we do have an attribute that we can pass on for the height. Now height is going to be, uh, first and foremost, height. And that height is gonna be simply bar height. Now, there is a little bit problem here with the bar height, of course, you get to remove that. Now, there is a little bit problem with the bar height that we are going to fix in a minute. First, we need to see what that problem is. And then finally, we are going to transform a property, apply the transform property here. So we're gonna say attribute, and again, uh, Actually, we can just save it up here and we can see that we have just one graph here, but now we need to loop through our data and keep on extending the transform property here. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So we're gonna say attribute, and this time we are looking up for an attribute which is going to be transform. And now the second parameter here is, okay, why are you having issue? There we go, remove this. So the transform property actually works with the translate. So we have to do something like this. Uh, first and foremost, we have to just go exactly like this. But this time, we will be instead going up with a callback function just like this, because we need two parameter, the data itself and the index as well. And then we can use our arrow function. Inside the arrow function, I want to tr give this transform an exact thing, which is translate. There we go. And translate uh, takes uh, values uh, just like this. Okay, and I need a little bit more space for a minute. So I'm gonna expand that. So translate takes uh, two values, uh, probably the starting X point and the Y point as well, like 100 and we can give 100. Now this is not gonna make sense right now. First we need to save that and there we go. So it moves just one graph here. All the rest of the graphs which are actually are hidden just below this one. So what we need to do, we, ha we can actually keep the starting X point here, but for the Y point, we need to just go just below that. So in that case, most what I'll do is I'll just bring them up onto the next line. It can be a little bit confusing that way. And then this 100 needs to go, so we are going to concatenate each and every value just like this. So first and foremost, add a plus sign up here, and then we need another uh, brackets up here. And this gives a little bit of the issue for a moment. Uh, we're gonna fix that in a minute. And then we need to concatenate here as well. So I'm gonna add a plus sign. And just below that, we are going to add this one here. So there we go. Now this 100 is uh, actually can be transformed into any value, whatever you like. What I want to do is I want to take the index. So I'm gonna say I, and I'm going to multiply it by bar height. Okay, so the bar height that whatever we have defined that this should be like the height of the bar, we're multiplying it. So let's just save that and see. So there we go, our graph is being populated. But now you can see the height height thing is actually all done, but the width part is uh, not so great. So this bar height, whenever there is a height, we need to actually subtract, let's just say four from it so that there is a difference between each and every value. Save that and there we go, we got the value. I know this is not the amazing, uh, example up here, it should have been turned, it should have been rotated a little bit. Uh, we are not much of habitual of seeing the graphs in this pattern, we are more habitual of seeing the bar charts in a horizontal fashion. But again, D3GS can definitely handle and we need to dive deep into their documentation process and stuff like that. So there we go, a quick example of D3GS. I highly recommend to go into their doc documentation and figure out more of the things. Now here's a quick word which I have seen everybody who is using D3JS. Most of the time, whenever they need any graph from D3JS, they just copy the entire piece of code and just replace it with their own data. Uh, that's what I have seen and heard and talked to all of the programmers that are using D3JS. Again, this might be the your case as well. I hope you have enjoyed this amazing video on D3JS and you have got few hints about how to use the D3JS, where to use it, where not to use it. In case you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, a like button, and of course, don't forget to share this video with your friends so that they can also know you're watching amazing videos on D3JS on this amazing channel. That's it for this one, and I'm gonna surely catch you up in the next one. Till then, keep coding.